Welcome to Go Mission, a monthly program on the The Generation podcast designed to highlight amazing accounts of gospel advance and equip you to join Jesus in his Go Mission. It's great to be with you again on the Go Mission podcast. I'm Mark Gilmore, missions traveler and trainer. And I have for you today a remarkable testimony of obedience in the life of an almost teenage boy in Asia. Brother Kay is a gospel worker whom God has used to equip and train many, many believers as church planters. He's part of a great vision to see the gospel reach every people group in Asia, where God truly is doing amazing things. In one of his training sessions a few years ago, in which he was working with about 15 pastors, Brother K was attended to by a young 11-year-old boy who was assigned as a simple helper to stand by and care for the food and drink for everyone. He stood in the doorway the entire time. However, the boy was doing more than serving. He was also listening very carefully. Brother K tells how that young boy responded to what he heard. A story about 11 years old boy who was a maidservant. He was uh, standing on the door, uh, near the door, because the owner said, uh, whatever the preacher or teacher is wanting, you just help since we are all learning. So they were. 15 pastors because the house owner was a pastor. He invited 15 of them. So I was training very hard. This boy, he comes with water, sometimes tea in the middle he gives me, but he never goes out. He is to stand near the door and listen everything that I was teaching. But I was not teaching him actually, but I was teaching the whole group. And after, after the training is done, uh, this boy to ask permission from his owner saying, can you give two days leave? I want to go home and come back. Then the owner gave two days leave. He went straight and he went and told to his father and mother and brother about uh, the love of Christ and they all got uh, belief and the father was sick and he prayed and father got healing that day. So they all got amazed and immediately I always give my number on the board if they want to follow up. Mm -hmm. So he took that number and he started calling me, what shall I do now? My mom and dad, they have uh, followed Christ. They obeyed and I prayed for them. Uh, I was I was shocked, and I said, uh, "Who are you?" No, that day you were training. I was standing on the door. I said oh, you were working in that house. Said, yes, but uh, after you shared why we need to be saved, how Jesus loves me, and why we need to share about love of Christ to others, I, the first thing is I realized uh, my mom and dad need Christ. That's the why I took leave and came back, and I want to serve Jesus. I'm happy that my parents came to Fred. Uh, he said, "I don't want to go and work anymore, and I want to serve here." I said, "Then you need to tell to your owner." So he said to his owner that I won't be coming. Like then the owner called me. This is the reason I don't want this training. <laughs> I'm losing servant. I. I have so many people, guests coming. I said, hey, don't worry. I will provide another helper for you in your house, but you release him, you know. So uh-huh. I released, then he released, I brought one more maid servant in his house and I started coaching at the 11 years. And then in a couple of years, he planted 11 churches. Uh-huh. And then now he has planted about, what, around 40 churches? And to be surprised, he was at UUPG groups. And these are tribals. So Mm -hmm. I didn't have any idea. I was just praying for the people to be saved. Many around the globe 
I didn't even ask him what people group did he is belong, but Lord gave through this boy. Mm. I was not even training him actually. Mm. I was training the 15 pastors. But you know, one, one greatest surprise, all these theologians, PhD, some were doctorate, some were MTH, BTH, they have planted not even a single church. But this boy, whom I've never thought about it or expected, he went and he started now 45 churches. Mm. His parents were that. Now his father is a pastor there in the first church. So that's why there are many times, you know, my assumption was wrong. Even my thinking was wrong. Even my thoughts were wrong. Even my plans were wrong. God has his own plan. God has his own thought. God has his own mind and he's working we are just need to be faithful and preach it or teach it that's what the lord has told me in that group 15 pastors mm -hmm, nobody not they didn't even share the gospel to their neighbors but someone whom i least expected not even expect god has used him you know the, mm -hmm. the thing is, the thing is, he has penetrated the word called go, the urgency. And the most urgency is our family first. So he went, I didn't say anything about his family, but he went to reach out to his own family. Then come your oikas, your friends. Then go to the mission world, adapt world and go. Even in USA, how many of your families are being destroyed with a carnal mind? I think it's best thing is are to ask the students, are your siblings saved? Do you think your parents are saved? Do you think your uncles are saved? This is the immediate Jerusalem for us. That's how we need to work it out. And these are the names they can easily write in their heart, and they can pray every time. Notice how this boy and his witness was an answer to prayer for the unreached people of the world. I want to remind you that God can use your prayers in the same way. Here we have a simple, obedient boy who accomplished more for the Lord than well-instructed, seminary-trained pastors who really would not even obey and go with the gospel. As Brother K points out, we must start our gospel witness with our family, then with our friends. Do you carry a daily prayer burden for your family and for your friends, your classmates? Make a list and trust the Holy Spirit to give you boldness as you step out in faith. People around us carry so many burdens today. They are overcome with temptations and brokenness. They need to know the love of Jesus, that he died for them and he will save them. He will do for them just what He's done for you. Share your testimony. Be urgent, just like this young boy. I'd love to hear what God does through you as you step out in faith and share. You can reach me by email at gomission at thegeneration.org. I do hope you'll send me a short note telling me what God does through you. Now, here's a final challenge from Brother K. The most successful person in the kingdom of God is the one who go and share. That's it. If the Lord converts them, then you get opportunity to disciple. That's an opportunity. But as a Christian, the obedient, the most obedient and successful Christian life is the one who go and share. These two words, go and share. This is our obedience. And the work of the Spirit will choose who say yes to Jesus. That's the time we need to disciple them, to obey what you have obeyed. You have obeyed go and share, you teach them go and share. This is how this world will reach this is the DNA our generation need. 
The DNA for our generation must be to go, share, and make disciples who also will go and share. Remember, the only way to stay at peace in a world of turmoil and uncertainty is to stay on mission with Jesus in his Go Mission. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the The Generation Podcast. If you've been blessed or helped in any way by this episode or any other episodes, please consider sharing what God has done in your life. Your testimony could be exactly what someone else needs to take their own step out of the boat. To share your testimony, please visit thegeneration.org slash testimony. That's T-H-E-E generation.org slash testimony.